Welcome back then to Las Vegas. It's Alex Belfield talking to the stars of the strip, and we're here at Human Nature, which is at the Imperial Palace, and truly the show with the most energy in Las Vegas. We've got Mike. How are you? G'day. Hi, Andrew. How you doing? Good to see you. We've also got uh, Toby. Very well, thank you. And Phil. Hello, how are you doing? Boy, it's nice to see you again. We met this time last year, and it was good then. I think it's even better now, and the crowd just seemed to love you. Oh, thanks. No, I um, actually, to hear you say that is uh, a great... Uh, really nice to hear because you know you do six shows a week and you hope that it's getting better and it's not just getting you know not getting samey or anything and to hear that you thought it was better than last year is exactly the right thing to to say (laughs) you see I can beat your record I've done 14 shows in the last week so I'm not doing so bad and truly the crowd seem to love it more than any other show the standing ovation at the end seems incredibly genuine oh yeah we're really lucky that um, it's you know, I, I guess there's something in the music and our performance. I, I think that kind of does, does give the crowd that energy. That you know, we, I don't think we can claim credit for all of it because the music is just amazing. But I suppose the fact that we do we, we do it well, I suppose the audience really gets into it and really enjoys it. So by by the end, they're up dancing and it's it's great fun. And I think that's the truth, Toby, isn't it? If you did this badly, it would be the worst show in the world. Yeah, we, if we did it badly, we wouldn't be here. We would be uh, touring the the outback RSLs in Australia, I think, trying to trying to sort of get a kangaroo and a, a crocodile to come and see us or something. But no, we um, I mean, we just love this music. It suits us so well, and you know, it sort of makes sense that you know we were influenced by this music when we were kids, and so sort of come full circle. And I think you know our passion that we put into it comes across. I tell you what's nice, Mike, as well. You're not trying to do impressions or impersonations. This is your own take on these great songs. Yeah, well, I guess, I mean, we're, we kind of cover the whole range of music in Motania from the Supremes to, you know, the Four Tops, Temptations. I mean, there's so many different voices in there. It's not, we never, you know, no one's going to try and put a skirt on and do Diana Ross, you know. But <laughs> yeah, not yet, anyway. Not, not yet. An there are some shows Maybe in Vegas that would. But, yeah. <laughs> but um, you know, we just, we just do our take on the music and I think that's... You know, people appreciate that. You know, they appreciate the. We we brought ourselves to this this music as well, and and we we just they can see we love doing it. And again, the band is terrific, and that gives you a certain energy. If a bad PA system or a bad band wouldn't do you any favors, would it? No, our band is great. They uh, actually become really good friends of ours too, because we've had the same guys pretty much for the whole run. We, coming up on our um, 500th show in a couple of in about a month and a half. Or, um, so th- these guys have been with us and they-, they love the show as much as we do. I think there's a real great camaraderie on stage and I'm glad you can pick that up. How are we going to celebrate then, Toby? 500 shows? Do we get uh, free access to certain ladies of Las Vegas? <laughs> it- it's Vegas. It's Vegas. Anything can happen. I think um, one of us is going to wind up on the roof of Caesars with a severe <laughs> sunburn and I'm-, I'm putting my hand up for losing a tooth, oh, really? personally, yeah. Well, I've broken arm in your honour, so everything. Yeah, congratulations. Fine. That's Isn't this marvellous? Something to take home from yes. Vegas. I was expecting maybe the clap or a VD, but no, I've ended up with a broken arm. <laughs> this is Vegas. Yes. There you go. <laughs> and two and a half thousand dollars just for them to look at it. That's nice. Well, there's still time for the for the VD as well, so <laughs> the night's not, night's not over exactly. yet for you. I've got another week, so we'll see what we can do. Um, let's talk about you then, how you all met. We've got the two brothers on the left. We'll talk to them next. Tell us your story. How did you get involved? Well, we all went to the same high school. And um, Andrew and Toby and myself were in the same year, and um, and it was about, um, our fourth year of high school that Mike joined the school in year seven, and um, and it was at the end of that year that Andrew decided for a schools concert, like a combined schools concert. He he thought this would have been great to get my four, my three other friends or two friends and brother that are in the choir with me together. Um, let's make a four guy group and and do some do a, a song by ourselves and. So we did Earth Angel at that concert and had so much fun doing it, we just kind of stuck at it. And the school wanted us to, they kept getting us to do things. We did so many versions of the national anthem, it wasn't funny. <laughs> um, yeah, and just, uh, that's how we started. We just had so much fun. It, it's what, what started off as just a little fun thing at school turned into a, a, a real career and it's great. And again, you are at the top of your game. You wouldn't be her unless you were extraordinary. And the one thing about you is you've got an incredible voice. They were wise to adopt you, weren't they, really? <laughs> to adopt me. Uh, no, I mean, we. I guess that when we started, I actually had a... I was a boy soprano. You know, we were... All our voices of... You know, I think that's probably one of the, the, the special things about us is that we, we have grown up together. And, you know, our, our blend is just kind of... You know, we, we've always been singing around each other, so it's kind of... It's just happened that way you know our voices just really work together so um but yeah no we're 
Now we 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 love singing and we we love doing the. You know, we we've never sung as much as we have being over here and doing these shows. And I think through doing it, we've all we've all got better. I think, which is which is great. And you prove you can sing together, Andrew, because you do these beautiful a cappella numbers. There's no hiding behind anything there, is there? No, unfortunately, <laughs> um, some nights when we're, one of us is sick. But it's kind of it's one of the great things, I suppose. That, the great moments of the show is when we strip it back to just the four of us and I think those points in the show when people that might have doubted you know I guess the idea of four white guys seeing Motown doesn't instantly kind of ring true to you so when we put those moments in the show I think it just shows how real we are it's funny we had um, Tito Jackson in the show last night and um, you know he just said even before he we did the show we told him we'd been together for 21 years and he goes wow you guys are real so it was kind of a cool thing to hear, and I think that's what people pick up in those in those moments on the on the stage when we just just ask that we're real. So when you've got one of the Jacksons in, how does that change the flavour then? <laughs> well, um, we try not to let it. I mean, you, obviously, I guess there's a little bit more nerves there, um, but um, we've actually had a few people come in, like Smokey's part. Of the, you know, he he presents the show, which is great. But we've had a lot of Motown people come in. Barry Gordy himself actually came in and. I don't know, it just gives you that little bit extra bit of nervous energy. So it, it's, it's actually a really good thing because you, you do get a lot more energetic on stage and, and, and you can really feel it. There was a moment, be- though, before ABC when I was thinking, oh, shit, we're about to do ABC. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's, you know, it does it sort of changes how you, you, you know, you can't help but think about somebody like that being in the audience. But it's, um, it's great, you know, it drives you to do an even better show. And none of these are easy songs to sing, are they? Let's face it. No, I mean, they're, they're, I think that's the surprising thing. Well, the thing that we found surprising when we started recording these Motown songs back home is that they can potentially sound fairly simple, you know, to because they there's something about how they just work, and they, they you you think there's not probably not many parts to it, but we really found, particularly when we were um, working with a live band performing these songs, there is a magic about the blend of them that you can get it just wrong, and it you know it sounds terrible so there's a real art to you know that's why it's so great that we've been working with these guys here for for almost two years because you get to know the songs so intimately and and you know it all sort of gels together better mike i think i talked to you about this last time but what's it like being a sex symbol i'll go around the group one by one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know it's a little bit hard you know day every day waking up and just you know looking in the mirror and going geez you're you're a sexy muffin. You know, you, you just kind of... <laughs> it is hard. You know, it's hard to, to do that every morning, but um, mm. you just have to if, when you are a sex symbol. You've you used to... the word hard four times since you began that <laughs> sentence. Is that really appropriate? <laughs> no, you just got to tell yourself that you that you, you are sexy and, um, yeah, mm. just keep going. you good thing. And, Andrew, would you describe yourself as delicious? <laughs> well, I get the 80-year-old lady that bought my CD <laughs> said I was delicious. So, um, yeah, delicious. Um, not after I come off stage. But um, no, I, delicious is not a word I use often, but thank really? you. Oh, well, there you are. You can have that. That could be my gift to you. And Toby, of course, you're the one with the big balls. Well, I don't mean literally, but on stage, you've got the most incredible can voice. Them? Can you see them? I wasn't I'll looking closely, about that. but uh, let, me, let me ask the ladies, because I know that you get to get intimate and down with them, and you get to, to look in them in, in the eye and then play with them and touch them. Am I going too far here? But he more or less no, does not that. at all. Keep, keep going. It's Vegas. And of course, it's all because you've got that really bassy big voice, haven't you? How do you do that then? Well, um, I sew balls number three to ten on before the show, so my voice is lower. No, it's I don't know. It's uh, it's weird. I think it's it's easy to sing that low on a on a mic. I think because I think when you hear me speak, it doesn't necessarily sound like I've got a really low voice, but the mic does help a lot. So. We'll see where we've added the processing, because I tend to sound like Donald Duck half the time, which isn't great for a radio DJ. Have you done any radio? I mean, you'd be perfect for it. You could do a love show. Um, no. <laughs> no, I think I'll give that one a miss until I'm maybe 60-ish. Or unemployed. Yeah, or unemployed. One of, yeah. one of the two. Uh, very funny. Let's talk about Vegas, uh, Phil, because this is the place where it all happens. I mean, a year on, you're still here doing the business. Are you fed up of it yet? Because this is very different to where you're from. Oh, I was fed up after about a week. Um, but no, it's, <laughs> no, no, we're, we're really enjoying it. It's actually, funnily enough, it, it, it's the sort of place that really does grow on you. You know, you, you, you slowly, it, it, at first it's hard to settle in because it is so different to where you're from but I suppose that's the same anywhere you just get more used to it and more comfortable and and now we're really enjoying it do you tend to avoid the strip and the community or do you, do you just do the show go home how do you live well it's not that you avoid the strip but it's, it's not sort of 
you know, oh, let's, you, it's not trying to spend all your time there either. I think that's, that's what gives us a bit of grounding is um, knowing we work on the strip, but there's always that escape to go home. And um, it's, it's funny because a lot of people think Vegas is just the strip. When it's actually not, it's actually got a couple of million people, and there are, you know, there are suburbs out there. It's a real city, so um, it's good to see all the different parts of it. It was also good to see your showroom full tonight. Uh, that isn't a given, trust me. Having seen a lot of shows lately, that they are struggling. I think real talent though is always going to pay off in the end. Um, you've also got a great CV. You've worked with people like Michael Jackson and Celine. It doesn't get any bigger than that, does it, really? Yeah, no, we've we've been lucky to work with some amazing talent over the years. I mean, doing that the the history tour with Michael Jackson was, you know, it was amazing. That was around when we we released our first record and getting that opportunity to watch him on stage and to, we did the whole tour around Europe with him and we did Wembley Stadium with him in in London as well, which was it was just amazing. But um, yeah, and you can't help but learn from doing those tours and touring with the, with Celine as well, who was a she was such a, a lovely person and S Club Seven. Yeah, we did that. We toured oh, with Desk Up 7. You can't beat Reach for the Stars, no, can you? you? Oh, well, that is a great song. I mean, we, Eternal. Eternal. We were toured with Eternal. Well, I like them. They're a bit better. Yeah. Desk yeah. 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 Up 7 was great. Uh, Have you thought of doing Reach for the Stars maybe at the end of the show? It's a good <laughs> ending number. It is. Instead of Reach Out. <laughs> yeah, we'll just replace Reach Out. Metal to Reach yeah. Out, Reach for the Stars. It's fabulous. But yeah, it's a, it's a karaoke goals. number gone mad. Goals. <laughs> hey, listen, guys, really lovely to talk to you. And, and seriously, it's such a great show. Come and see Human Nature. It's on here at the Imperial Palace. And, and a show that you're really going to get into it. And I know that sounds strange, but a lot of these shows, you can tell they're doing 10 shows a week because it's so formulaic. Anything can happen in this show because you do play with the audience and you go out to the audience. And I suppose you don't know what they're going to say next. Never. And that's a, that's a surprising thing. I mean, sometimes... Like particularly like when Andrew brings up the he brings up a, a girl in my girl and uh, sometimes they just absolutely shut off and like you can't do anything but just sort of soldier on but most of the time they're they're fantastic and it it really helps you know getting having a connection with the audience and making you know helping them interact with you and it's a lot of fun listen come and see the boys from human nature Mike Andrew Toby and Phil thanks so much for talking to me on the program again thanks thank Alex. you very much